everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, thanks for joining me today. There's a really interesting story out of Shanidar Cave in northern Iraq. Um, they, the latest Neanderthal that was discovered was found, it was an articulated skeleton, which basically means that they found it as it was uh, when the person died thousands and thousands of years ago. Many, many thousands of years ago, which we'll get into the dates in, in a minute here. But if you guys don't know about Shanidar Cave, let's uh, pull up the, the map here. So here's northern Iraq here. This is like the Kurdistan region. Within, basically spanning the entire Middle East is this place called, this mountain range called the Zagros Mountain Range. You might have heard of it. There's this cave here that the, in which they found many remains back in like the 1950s and 60s of Neanderthals the most famous of which I think they found eight adults and two children. And they've dated them to around 65,000 years ago. And again, the dating goes back to a time when uh, technology, the dating technology wasn't as reliable as it is today, which again, we'll get into uh, as we uh, progress along this story. But then there are two famous, uh, gr actually groundbreaking discoveries that they or conclusions rather that they've taken away from uh, this this cave here. The first one is the specimen known as Shanidar One, and this specimen survived brutal injuries that you would think would um, kill somebody, and was uh, actually nursed back to health several times. And so that is indicative of some sort of medical knowledge, some sort of techniques, at least rudimentary techniques that, that kept this person going 65,000 years ago or so. Another uh, specimen that they found is Shanidar 4, which is famous for the flower burial. They found pollen remnants, like a ton of pollen, actually. So the person died and was buried with a ton of flowers. So obviously this indicates purposeful and ritualistic uh, burial practices among Neanderthals, which was completely unheard of. If you've seen any of my episodes regarding Neanderthals, then you know that I've talked about this ad nauseum now that mainstream archaeology refused for a very long time until very recently to uh, bequeath these abilities and this uh, ab the ability of abstract thought, religion, all of these things, uh, the afterlife, and technology beyond that of just rudimentary hunter-gatherers. They, they were very hesitant to attribute uh, these abilities to Neanderthals, but now the, I think it, the writings on the wall is pretty clear that Neanderthals have this ability and probably a bunch of other abilities that we haven't uh, heard of. Another uh, notable uh, thing about the Shanidar cave is that it's also home to the proto-neolithic cemeteries belonging to Homo sapiens, which date to around 10,600 uh, before present. So right after the Younger Dryas event um, again. And the only other uh, articulated remains that they found recently, I mean, the, not the only other, but um, the most the second most recent after this this um, Shanidar ten, a Z that we'll get into um, was found in Spain, which is way over here, way west, and I think that was about 2006. So anyway, let's let's talk a little bit more about um, this skeleton. So this is the actual picture of the remains. Um, that's the rib cage, obviously. They find this person, or this individual rather, uh, arranged in their original position. Again, uh, that's where the word articulated comes from. And it's basically an upper tor torso and a crushed skull of an older adult. So along with the flower burial, like the conclusions they found regarding the flower burial, and um, all of these uh, other uh, mass, it seems to be a mass burial and like other, other ritualistic uh, remnants found within the, the tombs themselves. This articulated Shanidar Z specimen, again, uh, indicates that the Neanderthals were capable of cultural sophistication and probably domestication as well because they did find bones of goats and, and other animals. The last articulated Neanderthal remains were found at Cima de los Palomas in Spain. I just uh, mentioned that. The reason why this is such a big deal is because, um, again, this is a technological issue. So we have way more modern technology, more suitable technology now to explore everything from ancient DNA to long-held questions about Neanderthal ways of death. I don't know how uh, much DNA is left uh, in within um, either Shanidar Z, this new one, or the older ones, uh, because it's really hard for DNA to survive in, in hot climates. So I'm not sure if 
the modern technology is enough to um, overcome that deficit and really uh, get uh, get to some uh, clear conclusions about the the information surrounding these individuals. But again, that that's something that's going to have to be worked on. Um, here's here's a picture of the entrance to the cave. So it's pretty prominent. You can you can see if you were someone who was just a local and you didn't really know anything about archaeology and you saw that, you would definitely it's an it's a compelling sight just by looking at it. Um, and it's been around for probably hundreds of thousands of years. I'm sure I've done a couple. I've done like an episode about this. So basically, um, because of because of the political uh, insurrection and all the all the instability going on in the area, they had to stop. Uh, research and, and excavation of the area for a few years so it wasn't really um that wasn't ideal obviously and it kind of put the brakes on any any uh, on the talk on some of the speculation of of what was going on in there and i think uh the archaeologist lost a few specimens um due to uh the war and and the iraq invasion all that stuff uh earlier than 2014 like a decade earlier so really they don't know um uh, they don't really have an accurate inventory of what's there and what's not, which is pretty interesting because that's something that you would want to keep track of. <laughs> um, uh, in 2016, one of the deepest parts of the trench, the researchers identified a rib followed by a lumbar vertebra. This is the Shandadar cave um, and a clenched right hand. They still needed to uh, carefully dig it out. So a few years later, they come back and then they uncovered a complete skull, which was flattened by thousands of years of sediment and upper body bones almost to the waist with the left hand curled under the head. So so it's almost like a lounge position that they found this person in. The, the earliest dates that have come out are 70,000 years old, probably greater than 70,000 years old. Um, so if we just look at the map here, there were Neanderthals, not just occupying, but it seems like they were pretty widespread, um, probably amongst this entire mountain range as well as the Caucasus Mountains and most likely uh, modern day Turkey as well. Just this entire area were, was teeming with Neanderthals at the time more than 70,000 years ago. Okay, So how does this figure into the out of Africa into Africa theory? Let me know in the comments about what you guys think. Well, what does this mean that there's a large settlement of Neanderthals with seemingly advanced for its time um, technology and and ideas and and uh, beliefs. Uh, while the sex is yet to be determined, the discovery has relatively worn teeth, suggesting an older individual. So here are more. Here, this one's kind of a low resolution photo, um, but this is another uh, bone, uh, a, a photo of the bones of the left hand of Shanidar Z. The lowest part of the skeleton appears to be missing. That, that would be the legs and, and uh, femur and stuff. Cut off at the waist level by the removal of the block of sediment containing Shanidar 4. So Shanidar 4, like I mentioned earlier, was the one that they found buried with a bunch of uh, flowers. So this, th there's some confusion here. Um, Shanidar Z's body lay right below Shanidar 4's upper body. So there, it's almost like they were stacked on top of each other. But there was some space. Uh, allegedly, there was some space between them. Ralph Selecki, who uh, who recently passed away, but he was like in he lived to be like 102 or something like that. He was studying the site for for decades and decades. This is what he thought. He he suggested that there were a pair of legs just below Shanidar Four's head and upper body, and he thinks that um, they definitely belong to Shanidar Z, and they think that maybe. The actual lower legs and feet of Shanidar Z were misattributed to another Neanderthal from the cave, Shanidar 6. So, sh unfortunately, Shanidar 6 is one of the missing um, uh, specimens uh, lost during all of the stuff that I'm, all the political stuff that was going on before. And then they found a rock that looked like a pillow. And see, you can see here, it's almost like he, uh, this is how, how he was uh, buried here. This is what his position would have been. And it was unmoved. So for 70,000 plus years, he was, or she, was in this uh, position here, undisturbed. So relationships between Shanidar Z and other skeletons could potentially be resolved by analyzing DNA. Obviously, genetic materials are uh, hard to maintain in hot, in hot uh, regions. Um, another insight from this excavation suggests that some of these bodies were laid in a channel. 
in the cave floor created by water, which had then been uh, intentionally dug to make it deeper. So here's another uh, interesting uh, tidbit. Whenever there's fresh water in a channel, there's going to be people uh, settling in or around the area of the water, right? Because that's a very useful natural resource. Once the, the channel was created by water, they just dug it further and further. Um, it's almost like the Romans building on top of um, previous uh, ancient sites or sacred sites. So the Temple of Jupiter, I think, is one of those sites in which um, it was built by the Romans, but below it was something else. Um, it's it's kind of like, except the Neanderthals recognized that this area was sacred for whatever reason, most likely because it was a li you know, it was literally a life-giving site because, it, again, there was water. And then they decided to just uh, dig a further trench and put their uh, their dead in there. So these people may have been very prominent people within their society. Um, it, again, uh, th this requires a lot of uh, a lot more research and excavations. But just from the surface of things, it's just, it seems like these were very prominent people. Uh, just because the the Neanderthal population there went out of their way to to augment their their burial uh their burial rites and their customs with a natural uh life-giving site so that's very interesting so now um they're they're being conserved and scanned to help build a di digital reconstruction as more layers of silt are being removed at the site so again this is one of those stay tuned things of what else is going to come out just a couple of things though this area is not uh it's not shy of Neanderthal remains or like other other archaeological sites and sacred uh, ancient sites. So there was an episode I did a few months back regarding um, the there is this they found this shrine essentially that was submerged underwater in this lake. I think it was either Iran or Iraq around this area, though. And then they found some more cuneiform tablets in there. So this is what we're dealing with. This is an area that is rich in in anthropological history, archaeological uh, sites, and it's been continuously occupied in one way or another this entire region for hundreds of thousands of years. So it stands to reason, one, that there are way more sites because we're talking about caves. Even in Israel, pretty much everywhere, there are all these complex uh, networks of caves that I highly doubt that we know where all of them are, where all of them are located. And again, we don't know how much work is going into discovering these. Um, a lot of uh, religious cults have gone underground. A lot of uh, other sects of religion, like uh, the, the Essene Brotherhood is probably the most prominent, in which uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls were, were found in Qumran, in the cave network in Qumran. Um, and they were hiding, you know, they, they just kept their records and they were hiding essentially from the Romans of the time. They didn't want to get stamped out. So, um, th again, this is a very ancient network of, of tunnels that who knows how far away, they, how far back they go. And who knows if they were even created by Homo sapiens. They could easily have gone back to Neanderthals or even even uh, the proto-Neanderthals, the ancient, the ancient ancestor of Neanderthals. Same thing in Spain. And in, in, in parts of France, all these cave networks that go back 48,000 years, 50,000 years ago um, with paintings and all that stuff, too. So uh, who knows? Maybe there there maybe just the area between Spain and all the way to Iraq were just filled with Neanderthals at the time. And then Homo sapiens, maybe uh, the modern Homo sapiens either came out of Africa, which is now, you know, falling further and further into question or they came from uh, the, the east and the southeast of Asia and, and Austral Austronesia. Again, the jury's still out, but it seems more and more that we there's this tangled, tangled web of, of human migration, and there's just endless, endless debate about what happened. Um, so anyway, let me know what you guys think about this area, about the impact that Neanderthals may have had at the time, 70,000 years ago. Or again, 70,000 years ago, that's the, about the time of Lake Toba. Lake Toba uh, erupted around this time. And so um, th th there, that would be f either fresh in the memories of, of the Neanderthals if they had heard about it. Or, or there was some sort of huge migration going on as a result of Lake, because again, Lake Toba is down here, um, 
near modern day Indonesia. And it was, uh, uh, from all account, from many different accounts, uh, it was a, a global event that, af- that must have affected a ton of people with very few survivors. Although there was an article that I read the other day about there being article, um, uh, survivors in India uh, of the Lake Toba event, many survivors actually. And that's very, very interesting because for a number of reasons and is pretty relevant to this uh, article because just geographically speaking, it's a lot closer to um, this site. Um, and also, you, um, I, it would, I would wonder how the Neanderthals uh, interpreted and, f- and what they did in reaction to uh, the Lake Toba event. And then uh, 25, 30,000 years later, allegedly Neanderthals die out for, for whatever reason. Maybe plague, maybe uh, a war, whatever it was, um, no one really knows. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about that, about just the general area of Iraq itself. Um, if you guys know anything about local local stories or, or the, the people who've lived there for a while, what, their, what the local legends there state, um, all the different religions that have come through there, uh, like Zoroastrianism, um, comes to mind and even part even some uh, Buddhism uh, I know Buddhism was prevalent in in, uh, Af- in the area of Afghanistan at the time but maybe there, there were uh, some people some uh, Buddhists I know that there were some Buddhists that, that uh, went up over there as well as all the other uh, Judeo and all the uh, Christian religions and the obviously the the Muslim uh, Islam that spread over there as well so let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys later